I thought my chimney was big, but this one is beyond belief. It's the least one can say. I've been longing for a warm fire for ages. Since I set foot on the island, I haven't ventured more than two yards away from it. Have you also just arrived? Oh, late morning, I'd say. Louis, come join us. Monsieur, may I introduce you to Monseigneur His Eminence, Cardinal Piaggi? He joins us straight from Rome. Oh, just call me Your Eminence. It's simpler. George Washington, President of the United States of America. Delighted at last to make your acquaintance, Mr. President. Pleased to meet you, Mr. President. Louis Maurras de Richet. It is an honor to meet you. Young man, let's keep it simple, please. Let us forget our fancy titles. Nice to meet you, Louis. I should imagine you never thought you'd be in such company. I must admit that I didn't. It's the first time that I've ever met so many illustrious personalities. And you haven't seen anything yet. Generally, when Lord Mortimer organizes one of his receptions, there are over a dozen people here. They can't all be here yet. And you'll see, most of the time there's only the upper crust. And I noticed you were already getting to know his eminence at the entrance. It's the perfect place to build up a network. What were you talking about, if you'll forgive my indiscretion? At the risk of disappointing you, we weren't conspiring in our corner, sir. His eminence was simply telling me that he knew my mother and how much he held her in high esteem. It so happens that Monsieur de Riche's mother is to join us. Oh, pity. No scrumptious gossip or juicy tidbits, unmentionable secrets, or even money matters. But you'll see, it will come. Despite all the goodwill in the world, you can't stop people scheming left and right around oh, here. Speak for yourself, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Well, my friends, do any of you know the reason why we're here this time? Not in the slightest. As for me, I've been invited by Sir Horn, a close friend of Lord Mortimer, but uh, I do not know the reason why. You see, Louis, every time Lord Mortimer organizes a reception, he always finds a moment to set up a chat with all the guests. During which time we remake the world. Accompanied by gallons of absinthe and cussing, I'll leave you to imagine the result. So, if I understand rightly, Monsieur de Richet, you've come out here to join your mother. For what reason, exactly? Lord Mortimer asked me to come as quickly as possible to find my mother, who seems to have disappeared during her stay here. Ah. I took the first boat, and here I am. I'm so sorry. Don't be, sir. It's not your fault. Seriously, though, I know your mother well. Stay behind with me afterwards, and we'll take a moment to speak about her. Good Lord! Washington is wearing the emblem of the Grand Master of the Golden Order. It's the highest distinction of the Order in the United States. It puts him on par with my mother. He must really know his stuff when it comes to the occult. Good evening, my friends. Holy shit. That's the man for my vision. An urgent case has delayed our host, Lord Mortimer. He can't be present this evening, and he sends his deepest apologies. He's asked me here and he hasn't even turned up? Great start. And now, my dear guests, a light meal is served in the small salon. For those who would like to, you're invited to follow me into the next room. My dear fellow, you must have read my thoughts. I shall follow. We'll have to be careful not to make too much noise. One of Lord Mortimer's guests is relaxing. Oh, we shall be quiet. Don't take it the wrong way, Sir Holm, but I have already eaten. Thus, I shall be happy to remain by the fireside. If you don't mind, Gregory, I should like to keep Mr. Washington company. Please feel at home. And you, sir? If I stay with Washington... We'll be able to speak about my mother. But on the other hand, I'd like to learn more about this home. I saw him in my vision. Let's see what 
Washington has to say. Sir, if you don't mind, I shall stay here. Do exactly as you please, young man. Louis, thank you for staying. Just like you, when I arrived this morning, I found out that Sarah had gone missing. I know your mother well. Don't worry. Emily is from the English branch of the Golden Order. And President Washington is in fact the leader of the Order in the United States. I, I didn't know. Sorry to have made you wait, but I didn't want to speak in front of the others. You did well. Secrecy and discretion are the pillars of our organization. If I can help in any way at all, please don't hesitate to ask, my lad. And if you have any other questions, now's the time. And you, Emily. What do you think of my mother? I only know her through the Order. The one time we met, we only exchanged a few words in a corridor of Parliament. And was the exchange courteous or impassioned? I'm not sure if I understand. Was there any reason for her to be angry with you? Under other circumstances, I would slap your face for even asking. But I'll put your lack of tag down to her disappearance. Know that your mother is a woman I would love to work with. Her reputation is entirely deserved. Mr. Washington will be able to tell you more. Mr. Washington? You seem to be very familiar with my mother. Where did you first meet her? I met Sarah during the War of Independence on American soil. She was introduced to me by a mutual acquaintance, and I must say that her sound advice prevented me from making some terrible mistakes. She may not be a soldier, but believe me, she deserves a statue as much as Lafayette does. <sighs> well, I didn't see that one coming. There's no doubt Mother has many secrets that are still hidden. Right. Would it be too much if I asked you a few more questions? Not at all. Go ahead. But I can't promise I'll remember everything. May I ask, when you saw each other, what did you talk about? So, my mother was with you during the American Revolution. Did you talk about politics? Yes. In spite of her young age, she defended our cause with enthusiasm. Did she go to the front line like your famous gunner, Molly Pitcher? Yes, in a way. The role given to women in your war was a great step forward. Lui, I am impressed. Few people know about the legend of Molly. So you don't know the true story. Molly Pitcher is a character invented by Sarah. She persuaded me to use a heroic female figure, an American Joan of Arc, if you will. It enabled us to gain a few thousand extra fighters, and it was all thanks to your mother. I... 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 I didn't know that. Thank you, sir. I was hoping to speak with Lord Mortimer. At least now I have some information, thanks to you. I repeat, Lord Mortimer is a man of his word. You won't be disappointed. And I am persuaded that your mother's research is his main concern. I wonder if Mother is still on the island. Could she not have taken a boat and left? I don't see how. No vessel can moor closer than 200 yards. Not to mention the permanent presence of staff and servants. There is one strange thing, I grant you. This island is barely the size of Delaware, and despite that, no one has been able to locate your mother. So my mother still must be on the island. But I did find a book that belongs to my mother. Where did you find it? That's what worries me. I found it hidden on the wharf. Do you think she was preparing to discreetly leave? I don't know. An extremely likely proposition. I'll believe it when I see it. Don't worry, Louis. I'm sure nothing bad has happened to her. Yes, I, I hope not. Careful, they're coming back.
Well, I am impressed with all this splendor. But don't spend too much time with Mr. Washington, my dear, or you'll lose your pretty accent. <laughs> <laughs> you seem to be intrigued by that statue. Absolutely. It is remarkable. Lord Mortimer is fond of atypical works of art. I won't disguise the fact that I find it all a little megalomaniacal. But I must say, he does have some outstanding pieces. So, old, who was that young lady with you? Elizabeth Adams, Mr. President. She would have liked to have stayed with us, but the poor thing is exhausted. Elizabeth Adams? Miss Adams is here to rest. You have perhaps already come across her in the corridors. She arrived a few days ago. I perceived her, but we weren't introduced. Rest assured, she is not here for the same reasons as yourselves. Consequently, I'm counting on your indulgence. On that note, it's very late. You must be exhausted. The servant will accompany you to your rooms. Ladies, gentlemen, I bid you all good night. Mr. President, Your Eminence, Duchess, you have the same rooms as usual. You, Monsieur de Richet, will find your room at the end of the corridor. Well, my friends, I am bone tired. I am off to my bed. See you in the morning. Good night, sir. I shall do likewise. Louis, I shall see you in the morning. Sleep well. Good night. See you tomorrow. Oh, man. It's been quite a day. Your turn? The servants are not very efficient. Durache can't be far away. They'll find her soon. Their search time is restricted given that they must keep an eye on Adams. I can take care of her, you know. Yes. Well, in any case, I do thank you for bringing her to the island. From what I've understood, the search of Durache's room hasn't turned up any results. Not yet, no. But we've put her son in there. Perhaps he'll find something. Hmm. That might come in handy. Louis grows impatient at not yet having met the famous Lord Mortimer. He will meet him tomorrow. Oh, what a pity to lose a knight at the start of the game. Are you waiting for someone? A young French soldier. During our game of chess? Don't worry, Gregory. The game won't disappear. I'll have one of my men escort you back. Don't trouble yourself. I know my way out. Ah, good evening, gentlemen. Please forgive me for this late hour. It is never too late. And we have much to discuss. One last move? Don't worry. Our games always seem to end like this. Or always start like this. Come, come. Take a seat, my friend. Nighttime stroll, Mr. President? There's nothing like it for a good night's sleep. Do not hesitate to ask a servant to show you back. The corridors seem quite safe. Peppermint, lime flower, and valerian. My miracle remedy when one can't get to sleep. A very good night to you, Mr. President. Thank you. And to you too, sir.
I'm coming. Excuse me, am I bothering you? No, not in the least. Is something wrong? I'm going to need your help. Do you remember the young lady we spoke of in the hall? Elizabeth Adams. Home introduced her to us. Yes. Well, she is the daughter of my friend, the Vice President, John Adams. But she is supposed to be dead. Yeah, that's bizarre. Fair enough. Good heavens! I was present at her funeral. It is disturbing indeed. Yes. I need to make sure it's her. That's where you come in. I want you to distract Elizabeth while I search her room. And perhaps get my hands on some important information. At least, I hope so. Elizabeth is in the small salon. If you hurry, you can still catch her. I just need ten minutes. But if my vision is true, there are two men nearby discussing very important issues, and one of them looks much like Mortimer. Washington is very kind, but I came to this island for my mother, not for his ghost stories. Count on me, sir. Thank you, my friend. Keep Elizabeth downstairs as long as possible. She must not return to her room. Trust me. Well, did you get time to search the room? Yes, I found out many things. Good. Did Elizabeth give you any trouble? Elizabeth? No. Well, you could have mentioned she was with a raving maniac, huh? What do you mean? She was with a Frenchman. He was about to beat her when I arrived. What the devil are you talking about? I thought he was going to kill the poor girl. Did you intervene? I did what was necessary to give you enough time to search your room. Good work, my friend. I knew that I could count on you. So tell me, did you find any information? Oh, yes. What I found is likely to upset you. What do you mean by that? Elizabeth is indeed the daughter of John Adams. Why pass her off as dead? I found her medical file. It appears that for many years, your mother was her personal doctor. From what I read, she behaved more like a butcher than a doctor. What are you talking about? I'm not a child. What's going on here? John believed that his daughter was possessed. He appealed to your mother to save her, but the treatment she inflicted on the poor child... My God. Look, stop beating around the bush. What exactly did she do to her? Do you believe your mother capable of torturing a child? My mother got her hands dirty for the common good, so don't be too quick to judge her. For the common good? We're talking about the vivisection of a child. Of tattooing her from head to foot with a red hot iron. Stop this. For her fifth birthday, she inflicted the stigmata of Christ on her. And for her 10th birthday, a hysterectomy. What kind of gift is that My for a child? My mother's not a monster. I do not doubt that your mother meant well. But the techniques described in the file, it, it is pure torture. Uh, please, I need some time alone. I have seen some horrors in my time. But if what is written in these damned documents is true, be brave, my boy. Dear friends, I bid you welcome. I hope the night was not too short. Your Eminence. Duchess, Monsieur de Richet, allow me to introduce our new guests. They arrived during the night. 
Johann Christoph von Wollner, Minister of Religious Affairs and close aide of Frederick William II, King of Prussia. Napoleon Bonaparte, Lieutenant of the French Revolutionary Army. And Jacques Peru, French Revolutionary Tribunal Judge. Unfortunately, my friends, Lord Mortimer will not be joining us this morning, but he should be with us later. So, let us begin. What is Mortimer playing at? He tells me to come urgently and he sends no one to meet me? <laughs> and you, sir. Oh, monsieur. You must be joking. <laughs> Please, feel at home. How is the person huh. for you? Peru looks totally out of place here. Impossible. He's counting he the ten sets of cutlery bus. around each plate? The man is completely lost. Thank you again for the wine, your eminence. It is served every day at the king's table. I am delighted to hear it. Volner and Piaggi seem to be getting along well. My dear Johan, how are you? Glad to make landfall at last. And yourself? Very well. And your husband? He's poorly. The French Revolution gives him terrible headaches. Oh, I understand. I shall feel better too, as soon as the situation is settled. If by chance the French crisis is emulated in Berlin, there will always be a refuge for you in London, my dear. Your offer does you honor, Emily. But London is much closer to Paris than Berlin. Beware. The French are capable of sailing up the Thames straight to the Houses of Parliament. Oh, my friend, I am shaking in my clogs. <laughs> The Prussian Britannic coalition is not good for France. The last time we fought against them, our empire went up in smoke. Is the wine to your liking? Very much so, Sir Gregory. Such complexity. Typically French. A Sauterne, isn't it? Absolutely. If I'm not mistaken, this is not Lord Mortimer's favorite wine. It is yours. In his absence, I have taken the liberty of making a slight deviation from the rule. But I count on your discretion. <laughs> Don't worry. I appreciate the same grape varieties as you. I remember the last time we tasted that nectar here at this table. The finest minds of the century were present. And the last time we drank it, the orphanage in Bloomsbury was still in ruins. Would... would you repeat that? Oh, well, uh, I put some small effort into the works. The orphanage <laughs> reopened just before Christmas. The bedrooms, washrooms, and the classrooms had all been refurbished. I... I don't know what to say. You have given the girls a wonderful Christmas gift. Thank you. I made a promise. Now it is done. <laughs> Is everything all right? Yes, thank you. I had a moment of absence, but here I am again. My lord, I only know the prestige of your name. Might I have the honor of getting to know you a little better? You are Monsieur... Louis Maurras de Richet. De Richet? De Richet. A name with a nobiliary particle. Are you descended from a noble line? <laughs> the presence of a particle does not necessarily mean a person belongs to the nobility, nor does it prevent the observance of the rules of etiquette, Monsieur Von Volner. Have you any information on this Napoleon? <laughs> of course. He's just a soldier, not even a high-ranking one at that. I'll bet he's just here for some minor business. I wouldn't be so categorical. No one is ever invited here just by chance. You'll see. My friends, I would like to say a few words, please. I would like to thank Lord Mortimer. And you, Sir Holm, for bringing us all together here. Those of us for whom it is not the first time here, like me, are all trembling in sweet anticipation of the arrival of our host. For the rest, 
I would like to reassure you that Lord Mortimer always has a few surprising projects to propose. <laughs> but I can assure you that each and every one of us has always benefited from them. <laughs> the last time I came to this place, Lord Mortimer offered to help me in my electoral campaign for the presidency of the United States. And it is imminently clear that his support was an invaluable aid to us. We are here among like-minded people. So let us put aside the conflicts in which some of our nations find themselves at present. So I raise my glass in honor of you all, my new and old friends. I trust you shall not be disappointed, Mr. Washington. Washington is a very gifted speaker. <laughs> Leave him for five minutes with sworn enemies and he'll convince them to be friends for life. Right, we shall meet again tomorrow. All the guests will be present, as well as Lord Mortimer, I hope. Until then, I trust you will find plenty to keep you amused. Do you believe your mother capable of torturing a child? My dear George, I'd like to invite you to join me as planned at my place. I have a project to show you. It is time that the United States played a more important role on the world stage. I understand your reluctance of playing with fire. I know your new country is very young, but rest assured that I would do nothing to jeopardize what we have built together. I look forward to seeing you soon. Your friend, William. It looks like a note between Emily and Washington about trade deals. Portrait of George Washington. Greetings, Liam. Mr. President, you can guess why I'm here. Of course. Lord Mortimer has sent me to ask you a few questions about last night. It's... How am I going to tell Elizabeth's father that she's dead? I know. Mr. President, I shall endeavor to find out the truth about this tragedy. I must ask you to help me, though. Please. Find the degenerate pig who did this, Louis. Are you all right, Mr. President? Are you feeling all right? Oh, don't worry. It's this rotten toothache. What do you expect? I'm no spring chicken now. I'm talking to all the guests to find out who has an alibi and... Well, who doesn't, Mr. President? Can you tell me what you were doing last night so that I can strike your name off the list? I spent the night right here, reading. All night? Exactly. Emily stopped by in the middle of the night, you can ask her. She wanted to talk about some business we have in common. Anything whatsoever to do with Elizabeth? Not at all, Louis. A business matter. Were you aware that Elizabeth took laudanum? Yes. She came to ask me for some. She had finished her reserve, I believe. Did she tell you why she was so desperate to get some, Mr. President? She said she had terrible migraines that wouldn't go away. More likely for the voices she heard, not the migraines. Tell me, Mr. President. Had you spoken to Elizabeth since your arrival? You know her father. You thought she was dead. No, I didn't. And I believe I'll be taking my remorse with me to my grave. I wanted to, but I didn't know where to begin. You can't blame yourself. You, well, you couldn't have known that her days were numbered. Do you know if she had any enemies, Mr. President? Not that I know of. I heard about her altercation with Mr. Perry. 
But that case was closed, if I'm not mistaken. But if in doubt, I wouldn't leave any door unopened. And I'd go and question your fellow countrymen. Don't worry. Countryman or not, I'm not letting anybody slip through the cracks. Do you know why she came to the island? To get help, if I'm not mistaken. Isn't that right? Indeed. Sir Gregory suggested to her father that he introduce her to Lord Mortimer to see if he could help her. It would appear that she wasn't invited to the conference. That doesn't surprise me. The poor girl was in no way concerned by our business, and she had no political clout. So, I don't understand why Sir Gregory invited her during the conference of his good friend Lord Mortimer. He must have realized that he wouldn't have much time to grant her. Preparing a conference does not seem an easy task. On the evening of our arrival, Lord Mortimer didn't even welcome us, what with his being so busy and all. Yes, you're right, Louis. I didn't think of that. It is indeed rather surprising. The easiest thing to do is simply ask him, you know. Of course. Mr. President, we found a footprint at the scene of the crime. Not a dress shoe, I hope. That's all I wear. No, rest assured. It looks like the print of a big ankle boot. A large size, I'd say. Perfect. That should help you, Louis. It's a clue. A map of Vermont. A map of Vermont. A map of Massachusetts. Sir Gregory called us together to introduce the last guest. But hardly had we arrived when he set upon Monsieur Peru. And what has Monsieur Peru done to once again provoke someone's anger? Uh, we don't really know just yet. I get the feeling it won't be long before it gets out. Go beyond the nightmare. Does this line remind you of anything in particular? You've caught me unaware here, Louis. Let me think about it a second. No, nothing comes to mind. Sorry, Louis, but I am unable to help you. Mr. President, what do you think about your counterpart, Duke Manuel? I'm very surprised he was able to accept Lord Mortimer's invitation, given the political situation in Spain. What do you mean? The situation is ready to explode with France over Catalonia. Well, the Duke must have a darn good reason to be absent and come here, mustn't he? When Lord Mortimer invites you, Louis, you come. It's always in your best interest. I wouldn't say that personally, but... Mr. President, can you tell me a little more about the coming conference? Of course, Louis. That's why we're here. Lord Mortimer or Sir Gregory regularly organize meetings like this to put forward major projects. What do you mean by major projects? I'd prefer to let Lord Mortimer explain that to you, Louis. Let's say he brings together influential people in order to consider possible actions to undertake to guarantee the future of nations. Do you know the theme of the conference? Not in the slightest. None of the guests know the theme before arriving, but you'll see. Everything will turn out fine. Don't worry. Well, thank you for your time. Don't mention it, my young friend. Regarding your question on the nightmare, don't hesitate to question the others about it. Maybe one of them knows more than I do. That's a good idea. Thank you once again. I'll see you in a little bit. Is everything all right, my young friend? Mr. President, you might be able to help me. I'd like to know where that sword comes from. Any idea? Hmm. It reminds me of the statues in the garden. I can't guarantee it, but you ought to go and see. You never know, do you? Thank you, Mr. President. You're quite welcome. See you soon.
Louis? Louis, the conference is about to start any minute. This is not the time to be... Damn it. What's going on? Uh, I, I don't know exactly, Mr. President. I was looking for my mother and I, I came upon this body. My God. You don't think Sarah did it, do you? Mr. President, you really shouldn't get involved. Please be on your way. I'll take care of this. You didn't come this way and you didn't see anything. You're right. It's for the best. If Sarah did that, I don't know what kind of hornet's nest she's kicked open. But I do wish you luck, my friend. Ah, oh, darn. The conference is starting. Time is of the essence. Sort this out and join us as quickly as you can in the conference room. Everyone will be expecting you. Mr. President, this is not really the right time, and I, I didn't come for that. Your mother's seat cannot remain vacant. You must replace her while she's still missing. Your mother and I were to support Mortar on this project. I don't know what the subject is, but the future of our countries depends on it. Given the importance of all this to Mortimer, he won't let the conference begin without you. So if you don't want more servants coming looking for you, I'd advise you to join us quickly and to put a brave face on it. The best favor you can do for yourself, Louis, and for Sarah, is to come and support Mortimer's project at the conference. Look, I don't mind following you, but I should warn you. I have no idea what this is all about, so I can't make any promises as to what I might do. I shall make my decision after the debate, when the time comes. Ah, very well. As you wish. You will see once you hear everything. But given the situation, I think you will have everything to gain by joining Mortimer's side. I'm going. Don't be long. Tell them that I'm on my way. Ah, Louis, I've been expecting you. Uh, thank you for joining us. We are about to begin our conference. Let me explain what is at stake. Thank you kindly, but what do you expect of me exactly? My mother's the one who's supposed to attend, not me. That is indeed what was initially intended. Unfortunately, she still hasn't been found, and my guests can't stay here indefinitely. The conference must begin, and it would be truly beneficial to the Order to join in the project. Consequently, I would like you to replace her during her absence. What is at stake here is of the utmost importance. It's important that the French Order gets their say. And should you need any advice, don't worry, you are not alone, Louis. Very well. Can you give me a brief explanation of the aim of it all? Of course, Louis, I was coming to that. The aim of these meetings is to bring together the most influential people in order to think together about the future. But the future of who? Of the world, Louis. Our desire is to steer the destiny of our respective countries for the good of all, and to no longer suffer the random hazards of history. In concrete terms, how do you organize your discussions? A conference is always organized the same way. There are two masters of ceremony who determine an important subject. You and Sir Gregory, I presume? Exactly. We shall be the masters of ceremony. It was our obligation to each bring to the table several guests in order to debate a subject. Once the debate is closed, a decision will be made by a vote of all the participants. By a unanimous vote. If the project is not agreed on by all, then it will be rejected. And neither of the two masters of ceremony have the right to vote. It's up to the guests alone to decide, Louis. In other words, us. Gregory and myself are merely the go-betweens. Finally, if the project is validated, each guest goes home and starts working to make it happen. It can take years. How long have you been active? Oh, this tradition has more or less always existed, Louis. It has continued from generation to generation. Do you often hold this kind of society dinner? 
In general, once a year, but in actual fact it tends to be events that dictate our gatherings. Can you give me an example of an event that was decided here before being implemented in the outside world? Well, take the French Revolution. It was decided right here two years before its implementation in France. Concerning the case of the French Revolution, I wasn't invited. But as far as the American Revolution is concerned, Louis, I can testify that we planned it five years before implementing it, for example. Louis, let me keep you a moment. I have a dream that we shall lead by example and ensure that the American territory may remain in peace. Thank you for the thought, Lord Mortimer, but I don't see where you're leading. I'm coming to it, Mr. President. I need not remind you that North America is currently divided between the United States on the East Coast and Spain which occupies the remaining two-thirds of the continent. Well, I propose that Spain cede the center of the continent to France, namely all of Louisiana. Louisiana? But, well, it is not for sale! Lord Mortimer, I sincerely hope I have not come all this way just to hear you ramble on about what Spain should and should not do. When we went to all the trouble of gaining the territory a few years ago, it was not just to lose it today. Have I made myself clear? What did I tell you, William? You speak of union, and yet here you are, about to tear us apart. Duke Manuel, I perfectly understand you. But rest assured, you will soon adore my proposition. You shall see. Well, since you give me the choice, my good fellow, allow me to doubt it. However, I am impatient to hear what Spain could possibly gain from the sale of Louisiana. I never spoke of a sale, my good fellow. What? But I, I do not understand. There is one more territory left to conquer, if I'm not mistaken, in the Northwest. It is, of course, occupied by your notorious Indians, but... We shall soon be rid of the savages, so that is not a question. Duke, these savages, as you call them, were there before you. They are on their homeland. As much as the black people of Africa, Monsieur de Richet, that does not stop your dear France from massacring them and sending them like cattle to Mr. Washington's cotton plantations to provide him with cheap labor. So you keep your morals to yourself, if you please. Senor, I would not like to be associated with that. The subject of black slaves in the United States of America is a complex subject, which we shall resolve at a future date. I must say, William, I find your project mostly disfavors me. I thought you were my friend. And I am, Mr. President. That is why I'm doing everything in my power to calm your expansionist fervor. France, in Louisiana, should persuade you not to attempt anything to take the territory by force. Louisiana is a vast wetland where you would needlessly lose most of your troops. It would weaken you and offer certain nations the perfect opportunity to take back your famous United States. I am protecting you from yourself, George. Trust me. I understand. But with friends like you, sir, I certainly don't need any more enemies. I hope you know what you're doing. Am I imagining things, or does it look like Washington isn't aware of Mortimer's plan? That's enough. I'm tired. We shall continue this discussion tomorrow, but please be aware that your project will never be ratified. Those who are opposed to this project Follow me. Are you coming with us, Monsieur de Richer? Come, Gregory. I think Louis would rather stay. Wouldn't you, Louis? At the risk of displeasing you, my lord, I'd rather follow Sir Gregory. I don't think this is a place for the Order. Louis? No! Let him go, Mr. President. Everyone is free to choose.
President George Washington. Washington has to hide, shall we? The president's personal reserve of laudanum, and judging by the quantity, he can't go without it. Ah, there's also a letter. What are you doing in my room? Uh, as I walked by your room, I, I noticed the door was open. I wanted to check that no one had gone in. Hmm. And what is the outcome of your investigation, Inspector de Richer? Go ahead. Laugh it off. I, I didn't see anyone, Mr. President. Splendid. All is safe and sound. Well, since you're here, can I get you something to drink? No, no thank you, Mr. President. As you wish. Well, Louis, it's getting late and this is not my first conference, so let's get straight to the point. You are here to motivate me to change sides. I have decided not to follow Mortimer. I noticed. Every man must make his own choice, what can we say? That's the political game. And you did not commit to supporting Mortimer, so there's nothing for you to feel bad about. So, what can I do for you? President Washington, I regret that my situation is contrary to yours, especially as I really do respect you. Me too, Louis. Let us not mix business and emotion. Understood. I've just come from a meeting with Sir Gregory and his supporters. They are all rallying against Mortimer's project. That is to be expected. Great Britain, the Kingdom of Spain and Sicily, the Kingdom of Prussia, the Holy Empire, the Kingdom of Portugal, of Bohemia, and of Hungary. I know, Louis. I know. The coalition against France also gives me cause for concern. I'm certainly not saying that, on paper, Mortimer's plan seems very viable. Anyway, you haven't really said what you wanted to say. Tell me, Louis, what have you come here to sell me? You should join home. And why would I do that? This type of meeting might be familiar to you, but for me, I must admit, Mr. President, it's haul a bit over my head. It's only natural, Louis. But you are managing rather well for a first-timer. You've chosen the wrong allies, that's all. I hope my mother doesn't hold it against me if I've made a mistake. Anyway, if Lord Mortimer does succeed, it would be no mean feat. Did he tell you what he would gain from it? What do you mean? Well, Mortimer's plan has been meticulously prepared for many years, I imagine. Of that you can be sure. It's only natural, and his plan leaves nothing to chance. No, that's what... He never commits his own fortune, let alone his reputation, since you're the one who takes center stage here. In fact... Whether he wins or loses, everything is arranged so that he comes out of it intact. Yes, I... Ah, you've got to hand it to him, though. He's a master at putting together a plan which puts himself at no risk. That's true. Don't worry, he... you can trust him. Of course. I'll bet he's invested in a river transport company on the Mississippi or somewhere like that. 
It's true I had never thought about what he might have to gain. Tell me what Sir Gregory has to offer that I don't already have with Lord Mortimer. You are a man of conviction, Mr. President. You would never make a choice that could cost the American people very dearly. If Mortimer falls, he will bring the United States down with him. Haven't the American people suffered enough? I would never do anything that would put my people in danger. Exactly. Therefore, choose your allies wisely, sir. I must admit, your arguments do make sense, Louis. Louis, you convinced me. I congratulate you for your performance, because I didn't think it could happen. I merely expose the facts to you. Don't spoil everything with your false modesty now. You really were very good, and that's that. In any case, I shall follow you on this one. This may well arouse Lord Mortimer's wrath, but I must put the United States before anything else. Have we finished, Louis? Absolutely, Mr. President. I shan't keep you any longer. Allow me to take my leave. Good night, Louis. Get some rest. Tomorrow will be a very big day. Well, that's one thing out of the way. The only thing left to do is wait for the conference to resume tomorrow morning. My friends, the conference is about to begin. Please excuse me if I troubled you last night with my project. I understand that you might well have a few questions to ask. As you know, the final vote will be cast in a few days. This morning's aim is to answer your questions and check the temperature of your respective positions so that we may reach a greater understanding. As always, Lord Mortimer. Uh, we parted in perfect disagreement, my lord. Where would you like us to take it from? Come, sir. Please let William believe he still has a chance of winning us over. Otherwise, his imprecations will lack panache, and we shall be bored stiff. Oh, let me reassure you. I am convinced that a good night's sleep has brought sound advice, and that this morning will be even more interesting. Therefore, I would like to go around the table in order to hear everyone's first impressions. Well, I am still firmly against it, even though my choice won't count. Against. 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 And you, Luke Manuel? Against, of course. Well, as for me, I am for Lord Mortimer's project. Despite Duchesse Hillsborough's overwhelmingly convincing nocturnal attentions. What? So Emily was playing at trying to win over guests last night? It was nothing more than a friendly little chat, of course. How could it be otherwise? And by the way, remember me to your husband when you see him. And you, President Washington, what is your position? Well, you see, Monsieur Bonaparte, I would rather you'd have forgotten me for a minute. William, I am sorry, but I cannot follow you this time. George? What? I am against William. Please excuse me. I cannot commit the United States to such an enterprise. It's just too risky. It wasn't your fault. There was nothing else you could have done. I think everyone needs a little rest. As for me, I think I shall remain with Lord Mortimer, Sir Gregory. You are committing a grave error, Louis. Time will tell. My friends, I would like to thank you for staying. Good God, William. What is this I hear about you reinforcing military power in Louisiana? I have no interest in having France for a neighbor, and you know that very well. Calm down, George. Louis, explain our plan to Mr. Washington, please. I would have been only too glad to, Lord Mortimer. Unfortunately, I'm not sure myself that I've fully understood all the details of your plan. Oh, Louis. President Washington, the United States will double in size. By what miracle have you... You need to expand, George. You and France are the two major democracies in the modern world. 
It is necessary that you both become superpowers. Are you really going to sponsor democracy throughout the world? Of course, Monsieur Peru. That's why I don't want Spain to get too attached to those weapons. Uh, please continue, Louis. Explain my vision to Mr. President. By going through France, Spain won't suspect that it's you who's going to take possession of Louisiana. They'll even believe that France will be a protective buffer between itself and California and you on the East Coast. If Senor Godoy was afraid that you might take the territory by force, now he is reassured. You would never attack France. But why didn't you tell me before? So that Lord Mortimer would appear to be isolated without support. Exactly. You got it, Louis. Lord Mortimer retains the advantage by advancing under cover. And for it to work, he needed you to act surprised. William, you haven't changed. Always one step ahead. One step ahead? You're joking. More like five. On that note, my friends, it's getting late. Mr. President, continue to take offense over my project when we resume the conference in the morning. You do it to a T. And if Sir Gregory has the audacity to send you an emissary to convince you to go against me, do me a favor. String him along if you can. The more they believe we are divided, the more we'll have our hands free. Only too happy to oblige. Now, let us get some rest. We've got a big day tomorrow. Good night, gentlemen. Good night. President Washington, what is your position? Four, of course. You've given us all a fine lesson in courage. I... thank you. He owes you his life. That's quite something. That madman deserves to die. We are providing Monsieur Peru with care, but rest assured, he is no longer a danger to himself or anyone else. I think everyone needs a little rest. Next time, I'll listen to my mother. Not a day has gone by without something happening to me. What now? Louis, open up, please. Coming, Mr. President, I'm coming. Louis, ah, oh, there you are at last. Yes, I... I just saw your mother. She was accompanied by Emily, and they both went into the Duchess's room. I tried to join them, but I was refused entry. Louis, this does not bode well. Oh, shit. Emily might want to avenge your sister. I must act quickly. You're right, Mr. President. Thank you. Ah, Louis. Glad you're here. Blasted. He's gonna talk about my mother. Come and see what I've found. There are pieces of paper in the ashes of the chimney. Someone's been burning something here. Incredible. He doesn't seem to want to speak to me about what happened between my mother and the Hillsborough sisters. Show me a little. Look. It's possible to distinguish two different writing styles. Hmm. The rest of the correspondence between my mother and Emma. Someone tried to burn an exchange of messages. I'm certain. There must be more. Shit. What on earth is he doing? Ah, I see. I know what it's about. Do you know who was doing their communicating in this room? Yes, but... Of course, we must keep it to ourselves, because it is still a sensitive matter. Volner and Elizabeth had an affair. Volner hinted that he found a way to remain discreet about it. I admit it is ingenious. Well, I would never have guessed. Delighted to have helped, but I still have to find my mother. Of course. We shall see each other later in that case. I wasted enough time. The Bible. Hey, look, there. Hmm. No, I don't see anything. Come, Louis, look. Someone's clearly drawn a four in the dust. I have a clue. <sighs> I better take the Bible before he works his way back to it.
Good evening, Mr. President. Good evening. Hard to kill time on this island. Nothing ever happens. Gets a bit boring, don't you think? Are you joking, my friend? I'm sure you're just being ironic. Yes and no. It's true that the manor is full of books and works of art. Unfortunately, the subjects are restricted to Lord Mortimer's specific tastes. The Crusades, religion... Yes, that's true. By the way, have you noticed the representations of the Holy Lance he's got all over the place? Uh, no. It was the last thing in my mind, to be honest. Oh, well that's a pity. I would have enjoyed chatting about it, as I would have done with my mother. See you later. Good evening, Mr. President. Good evening. I'm back on the trail of my mother again. I don't have time to explain, but would you know anything about the Holy Lance? I... Ah, uh, that's good news. But be careful, Louis. You might end up getting noticed. Do you know anything or not? No, I regret I don't. But why not ask von Wallner? Theology is his field, after all. That's an idea. In that case, I'll try and find him. You are keeping up the good work, I see. But I'm telling you, keep your guard up. Everyone is rather on edge right now. You're right. Thanks for everything, Mr. President. See you later. Louis, busy as always, I see. How lucky you are. I must admit I'm trying to kill the boredom myself. I get the impression we're all in the same boat. And here I was, thinking you might have some juicy gossip. <laughs> Me? No, nothing at all. And you? I would like to be able to say yes, but it's been dead quiet. The only one with anything to say is Duke Manuel. But with that accent of his, I don't understand a word he says. It's exasperating. Right. I've wasted enough time. I'll keep our conversation to myself, Mr. President. Anyway, I must be going now. See you later, Louis. Here I was, thinking you might have some juicy gossip. Well, Mr. Godoy heard that we are expecting a last-minute guest. Pardon? Yes, a certain Alazif. Hmm, strange. Doesn't ring a bell. Well, I might as well not hang out here any longer, if he has nothing to say. Me neither. He must have misunderstood. The conference has started. Godoy is a little too used to court intrigue, if you ask me. I agree with you. Well, nevertheless, I hope I have distracted you a little. Yes, thank you, Louis. I don't need much. And don't hesitate if you ever do have any news. I won't, Mr. President. I wish I could entertain you, but... Apart from recommending a few paintings, I don't know what to suggest. That's very kind of you, but I'm quite sick of gazing at all those modern paintings. Thank you, all the same. I'm sorry, Mr. President, but I don't have a minute to spare right now. Yes, I see, I see. No time for chit-chat with an elder, of course. Well, run along, my young friend. Please don't hold it against me, but... I would like to be alone for a while. Do you really think we have a chance of winning? A chance? <laughs> you don't know me very well, Louis. We are going to win. But it only takes one person to vote against us, and we'll have lost. That's true. That's why none of them will. Why? Because I have an asset that they do not. Which is... You! My friends, prepare yourselves. The conference is about to resume. The time has come to lay down all our cards. You are keeping up the good work, I see. But I'm telling you, keep your guard up. Everyone is rather on edge right now.
Dear friends, I'd like to thank you for your continued trust and confidence. I admit that during these past few days, there has been much upheaval. I understand you have all been affected by this. Nevertheless, the world doesn't stop turning, and we are in fact on the verge of reshaping the modern world. That is what we are all here for, my lord. Thank you for your enthusiasm, Monsieur Bonaparte. Now you all know what we have to do. I cannot warn you strongly enough. If one of Sir Gregory's guests asks to speak with you, remain on your guard. It is highly likely that he will try to rally as many supporters to his cause as he can. Don't worry, William. We are all here to support your project through to its conclusion. Thank you, George. Now, please, go and get some rest before the conference begins, which won't be long now. Louis, stay with me a moment, won't you? I'll be needing your services in a certain matter. President George Washington. Mr. President, I was looking for you. Well, and I you, would you believe it? What on earth are you up to now? You make me change my mind for the vote of the conference, and then you proceed to change sides yourself? Yes, I, I do understand you being surprised. I'm sorry, but there have been new developments since then. What are you talking about? I'm only representing the Golden Order and replacing my mother. I, I admit, I had cold feet about it, but I must respect her choice above all. That is precisely what I tried to tell you, Louis. Sarah backed Lord Mortimer's project right from the start. Yes, I remember it well. Well, all right. Try to listen and have more faith in me next time, won't you? My experience might be useful to you. Listen. I must apologize once again, but it's not too late. Louis, listen. This is the last time you'll be dragging me into any such schemes. You realize you are playing with the destinies of nations. For goodness sake, grow up, young man. You're right, Mr. President. I cannot apologize enough. Please come back to us. Of course I shall come back. But from now on, Please keep me out of your shenanigans. I promise, Mr. President. And try to stick with one opinion, at least until the vote. You have my word. Good. Now leave me, I have work to do. Please leave me now. Louis, there you are. Well, tell me, how did it go? Wow. I did my best. Whom did you manage to persuade? President Washington is going to side with you after all. Ah, I was sure that was all a misunderstanding. Very good. My friends, here we all are. We are about to definitively shelve Lord Mortimer's absurd project regarding Louisiana. It will only take one of you to oppose it, and we have won. The vote is to be held shortly, so we must keep our guard up. I'm sure Mortimer's preparing something. Don't worry, Sir Gregory. Nothing can stop us now. Beware, Johan. We mustn't underestimate him. So, I'll ask you to return to your rooms and stay there until the conference. And if one of Mortimer's team comes knocking at your door, no matter what, do not open it under any circumstance. Don't give them the opportunity to manipulate you. Is that clear? Understood. Good. Count on me. As you wish. Right. Let us adjourn. President George Washington. Mr. President, would you have a minute to spare? Of course, Louis. What can I do for you? I wanted to make sure that you're still with us. Since Mortimer has to convince everyone to follow him to win the vote, well, 
I expect he'll try bringing you over to his side eventually. I won't lie. William did make a point of speaking to me. And? He has always supported me, Louis. I've been thinking long and hard about this. I know I said I would vote for Holm, but I've been reconsidering. I'm sorry, but I won't be following you this time around. Well, at least that's clear. Holmes the one who's going to be delighted about this reversal. I'm sorry for you. Good luck and see you later at the conference. See you later. Please, leave me now. Ah, Louis. I, uh, was getting impatient. So, tell me. Have you been able to speak to everyone? Absolutely. And? Did you find a... a traitor in our midst? President Washington. Can we count on him? Unfortunately, President Washington has changed sides. <sighs> I must admit it comes as no surprise. My brother has always followed him, and I was expecting this reversal. And that is not all. Duchess Hillsborough will also not be voting. The poor woman has suffered a lot of upheaval lately. As she was feeling quite poorly, she apologizes, but she preferred to return to the continent. The Duchess? I hope it's nothing serious. Don't worry, Mr. President. I had someone escort her. The Duchess simply needs rest, and now she is in good hands. Good. I think we can begin. You will vote in turn on the question that interests us today. Are you for or against? The transfer of ownership of Louisiana from Spain to France. President Washington? For. Finally, Monsieur de Richet. A word of advice. In the future, oh, that is, if you have one, don't drink someone else's cup of tea without checking what's in it. Father, what happened? Sir Gregory, what's the matter? William, what have you done? Not now. Oh. You... You are mad, William! History will remember me, and the sacrifices I made. Remaining very popular, George Washington put an end to the various internal rebellions without violence and re-established trade agreements with Great Britain. Upon his death, he became a national hero and left an entire nation in a state of mourning. During his second term, George Washington had to deal with a number of rebellions. He enraged public opinion by building close diplomatic links with Great Britain which forced him to give up a third term in office. He retired to his country estate until his death, without being able to implement the annexation of the highly coveted Louisiana Territory.